How poor were you growing up? I learned not to ask for things because I knew I wouldn't get it. I was the only kid in the 7th grade that couldn't go on the field trip. The fee was $5. Growing up with a mom who was addicted to drugs was pretty rough mostly. She could never keep up a job and sold all our food stamps and gifts my dad sent us for pills and cigarettes. I remember eating saltanine crackers and ramen noodles for dinner a lot. Around birthdays and Christmas my sister and I would get nice gifts but my mom always sold them not long after for her habits. I'm guessing the only reason we had food most times and clothes that weren't donated to the church was because my grandpa stepped in. I live with him now and still every time we go out to eat and I see something that costs more than $5 I wonder how anyone can afford it. Even though my grandpa has a good job and we don't struggle anymore, I still worry about money. Hang in there, work hard, make good choices, and you can make yourself a better life in the future just like I did. We have a similar background. I'm glad you have a supportive grandpa. My mom and dad were high school dropouts and my mom had me when she was 17. I grew up in a 3 room shack with no electricity and a wood stove. It barely had running water for the one toilet and one sink. To run a light at night my dad would pull the battery out of the beat up piece of crap Ford Fairlane at night and hook wires to a light bulb. My birthday money from family members was my new pair of shoes every year and clothes were hand-me-downs from anyone my mom could make friends with. Rice and beans every dang night of the week. Even reduced lunch was too expensive. So my mom made PB and J and I ate cracked freaking weed every morning for breakfast. That crap disgusts me now. On my birthday one year my dad and I walked to the Stavin Marvin gas station on Ogilthorpe Ave in Athens, GA and he bought me a 50 cent coke. On the way back home I tripped and it fell out of my hand, hit a rock and exploded. My dad really couldn't afford another 50 cents, but he walked all the way back and bought me another one. But then everything changed. My dad was working in a machine shop for a bunch of engineers. He made the items that they designed. Well he started finding ways to make their designs better so they let him go to the design meetings. Then they showed him how to use CAD and he was drawing up blueprints. Then all of the engineers got laid off. One of those engineers got a new job at a place called Cibervision. And he told the managers there about this really exceptional engineer he knew. So my dad, with no high school diploma was hired as an engineer based on word of mouth of other engineers. Our lives changed overnight. We had new clothes, a new car. Bought a house and for my next birthday I got a freaking Nintendo with one game. Holy crap. That was like heaven opening up and raining miracles on me. Now he's the vice president of R&D for a small company in Atlanta and he has put every single one of his five sons through 4-6 years of college. The part about your dad buying you another coke even though you guys couldn't afford it made me tear up. He sounds like a really great guy and I'm happy everything has worked out in the end. I honestly didn't realize that we were poor until I was in my teens. Me and my sister always got new clothes before the new school year, always had pretty good Christmas, and never went hungry. We lived in a pretty rural area surrounded by woods. We always had a big garden and grew everything from greens to hot peppers. I spent many a summer having pea picking competitions with my dad and helping him make his own hot sauce. Spent a lot of time on the bayou fishing, and during hunting season every free minute was spent in the woods hunting. It wasn't until I was about 16 that I realized what my parents had to go through to provide. I learned that we had a garden to have vegetables. I always thought that hunting and fishing was just a hobby for me and my dad but it was what provided meat for us. If we didn't bring anything home we didn't eat. They always managed to trick me into thinking everything was a game. I remember my dad buying me my actual rod and reel. He would tie old nuts and bolts on the string and challenge me to casting competitions. Who could get closest to that tree or whatever. Not knowing that he was trying to increase my accuracy to avoid having to replace baits. I remember when my grandfather gave me his old melon point .22 when I was about 10. I would spend my $5 a week allowance on bullets and just target shoot every day. My dad and grandfather would always set up new challenges and whatnot. I became a real good shot by the next hunting season and I was then a squirrel and rabbit hunting machine. I think this is such a good example of how living off the land is completely different from being poor in the city. Urban incomes might be higher than rural incomes, but so is the cost of living, and the quality of life is often far worse. 
As a very young child, my mom was a single mother raising two girls on what the government offered poor parents in the 90s and some help from family. We didn't live on our own until I was nearly 6, and we often had pizza which consisted of slices of bread, ketchup stolen from fast food places, and American cheese. I loved it and our meager existence. Literally, I have no bad memories of that time at all and remember it as just this adventure part of my life when mom and me and my sis spent a lot of time together doing weird stuff. Then mom finished her nursing degree, met the man who raised us from age 5, 1 stroke 2 on, and started earning enough to make a living. We were never upper middle class, and we were often lower middle class, but we always had food to eat and clothes to wear after that. My mom worked her butt off for me and my sis, and my dad came with two more kids of his own. I've never met two harder working people, and their efforts really helped me grow into a person who appreciates hard work and self-made success. Our house is older than dirt and falling apart at the seams in some places, but we love it and all the memories made there are good. We used to have that exact pizza, too, warmed up in the toaster oven, even in my 30s. I still get a taste for it sometimes. My family used to live in a squatter's area in a third world country. My father only made less than $20 a day. He was a driver for a public vehicle, assuming he made $15 for 8 hours. This would be split between the vehicle's owner and the gas expenses. My mom stayed at home and started a few small businesses. In 5 years or so we never had a bed, just a sleeping mat, a few pillows and a blanket that fit the three of us on the floor. We also didn't have a proper dining table. It was a DIY small table from scrap wood that we placed on the floor, the same floor where we would sleep, when we were about to eat, then had it lean on the wall when unused. My mom was smart enough to not give birth to another child, realizing that raising one child alone was too much an expense. It was my mom's business that saved us. We eventually managed to afford a bed, then a CRT TV, then a fridge, and then a phone. By the time I got a computer I was already 13 and in a private high school, something that a lot of families couldn't afford. My mom passed away before I graduated from college, but left behind quite a few some that kept me and my father alive for the next two years. Our house is still up in that area and my father lives there by choice. I moved out because of work. One time my stepdad was so excited he found a dollar in his jeans that he didn't even notice my brother falling down the steps. What if every time you found money you just unknowingly made a deal with the devil? Like, if you pick up this dollar your son will fall off the stairs. That crap would be cool as frick though. Both of my grandpas worked 45 years at a distillery while running a farm on the side. We never ate out, but we always ate well. Apple, pear, plum and persimmon trees, blackberry, raspberry, grapes and boysenberry, fish from four ponds, cows, pigs, sheep, chickens, and wild game. My other friends went on vacations and flew on planes. I thought we didn't have all that much. I'm glad I lived long enough to know. I didn't know that other 7 year olds chores didn't include catching, killing, and skinning squirrels for dinner. For reference, I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Being afraid to ask for things because you know the answer will be no, and getting used to not being able to afford things. Eventually, you just throw out school flyers about school shirts, field trips that cost money, lunch money, school supplies, dances, trips, anything that costs anything. You learn to accept what you have and make it work, and when you actually get something, you understand that it actually means something and costs your parent. S money they had to work for. Once I had my first job, I actually wasted the money on things I just kinda wanted because I had the luxury of being able to. It took a long time to learn to manage money wisely and it's still a process, because when you never have it, it's hard to understand how to hold on to it. There is a mentality when you are poor that you should spend the money quickly to buy things you want because if you don't it will be nickeled and dimed to death on things you need. Then you, seemingly, have nothing to show for it. My mom was addicted to drugs and our life was completely unstable. She worked as a bartender, sometimes three jobs, but was constantly being fired for various things and starting at a new bar. Sometimes she wouldn't come home for days. We were evicted from every house we ever lived in. I can't even tell you how many different schools I've been to without thinking it through. We were often homeless and had to live in seedy motels. 
Our car got repossessed. Electric water gas was shut off several times throughout my life. I started life out with horrible credit even before I turned 16 because my name had been used to start electric water gas or whatever on various occasions and then went and paid. And to this day I have an aversion to meat eggs milk because I've had food poisoning so often from bad food. We used to eat at school over summer break because I had a lunch program running for neighborhood kids so even though I didn't go to summer school I qualified and my brother and I would walk to the school to eat. Teachers used to give us hand-me-down clothes shoes cause ours would have holes in them or whatever. We both got made fun of a lot for general clothing appearance issues relating to poverty. Once when I was in high school I was dating an older man who was abusive and we were evicted from our home and had to be out by midnight. My mom was working a shift and afterwards I had no idea where she went because she suggested I move in with my boyfriend instead since we really had nowhere to go. After a few days of getting beat up I caught her at work and found out she had been staying with my brother on the floor of one of her random customers apartments. He let me go there that night but the three of us were sleeping on the floor and I remember it being so hot and I just felt totally defeated by life and really heartbroken over everything. I was scheduled to take my sat the next day at school but missed it. Ended up getting a job at McDonald's and dropping out of school shortly after to work more. Staying with my abusive boyfriend on and off because it was better than nothing. Or just walking through the city all night sometimes because nothing was better than the boyfriend. And eventually was able to rent a room and get more of a stable life going despite a general trend in young adulthood towards abusive relationships and other obstacles I faced largely in part due to leftover childhood poverty issues. We were homeless at one point. Mum was swamped with debt because she could not afford to care for two children on NHS pay. She did it though and me and my sis vowed to never be in debt thanks to what she taught us about money. Also I bought her a car because that woman is the best. My mum would specifically go to two ATMs across the street from each other and withdraw 20, run across the street to withdraw another 20 before the bank realized that the account was negative from the first withdrawal. Growing up I remember multiple meals that were literally slices of spam and nothing else. A can would do between 2 and 3 days at a push. At my poorest, as an adult, I ate even less than that. My mom would count the pennies in my dad's jeans to see if we had enough to buy bread each week. Our fridge was hardly ever full and I remember we always had milk and dozens of boxes of craft dinner. We lived in Canada at the time, but bread and peanut butter was a treat back then. When my mom finally broke down and told my grandma, grandma did her a solid and bought her a bread making machine. It was the most delicious bread I ever tasted. We saved enough money that I got three Christmas presents instead of just one. A few years later my dad went from an underpaid scientist to a cushy American government job and our living situation drastically improved. My sister has forgotten those days, but I remember and save all the change I can find in a jar, just in case. Butter and bread equals lunch. I always went with mayo. My mom used the butter for her English muffin so we weren't allowed to eat either. Gifts on Christmas and birthdays are things you need, not fun things. Christmas is usually when I got all my soap and shampoo for the next year. Clothes come from Goodwill, Salvation Army, Savers etc. If they weren't coming out of something's lost and found. School yearbooks and pictures are unnecessary. The best meals of the week would be the half-eating food my mother brought home from her waitress job at the country club. I always thought I grew up poor because my parents were always stressed about money. But I always had food, and I always had a roof over my head. I just remember having our heat shut off in the winter and living in the Midwest where it gets really cold it was pretty bad. We all slept in a room with a little electric heater, and had to be up extra early to get ready for school because we had to heat our bath water on the stove and dump it into the tub. I remember thinking that was as bad as it gets, but then I grew up and realized I had it easy. Electricity and phone getting cut off. Asking the neighbor to lend bread for school sandwiches poor. Never had enough undies or socks poor. Bought school shoes way too big and resold them until they fell apart poor. But we were happy. It wasn't until I was a teenager that I asked mum are we poor? I was born in a family that worked in the crop fields of someone else. When I turned 15 I was made to work in the fields. I understood why and was happy to aid my poor family. We had a small hut and then everything changed when I finally got a job at an IT company. I feel like you left out a detail or three here. 
when I was born. My parents were very poor. Ate ramen noodles and canned beans a lot from I understand. They had to share an old eagle summit and could not afford rent without assistance from my grandparents. They had to pick between putting gas in the car for my dad to get to work, rent, or whatever food we could get our hands on. The government assistance was not an option. From what my mom has since told me, we made too high of an income to qualify for welfare, but we were too poor to really get by. What was fricked up to me was that my mother came from a blue collar, working poor family, but my father's parents were very wealthy. The poor grandparents scrambled and sold for every coin they had to help my parents out. The rich grandparents, they hung up on my mom and dad when they would call them for help. Very poor. My family lived in the boiler room basement of an old apartment. I thought my family was poor because all we ate was ramen. Then I visited a friend and all she had was cat food in her cabinet. I asked her where her cat was and she said she didn't have one. This makes me sad every time I think of it. We had to decide which utilities we were going to keep on each month. I can remember a few months where the electric bill wasn't paid and we chilled our milk and frozen groceries in the snow. Remember my mom sitting my brother and I down to explain we couldn't afford to rent blockbuster movies anymore. I remember asking my mom are we poor? She said something along the lines of no, but birthday and Christmas are going to be very small this year. On the upside my parents started a soda company and made millions afterwards and are now happily retired. All the other kids had backpacks, and I stuck my arms through the holes of a plastic grocery bag to wear it like it was one. I grew up in a single wide trailer, we ate actual government cheese, and peanut butter, which was awful because it was thin, oily, and contained whole peanut parts. We only shopped in the generic aisles of the grocery store, it's not like today with brightly colored great value products. All the packaging was stark white with the product description simply declared in bold black, corn flakes, pitted pear halves, mechanically separated chicken product. I don't remember being conscious of the fact that we were poor. I just thought TV movie families like the Keatons, Family Ties, or the Griswolds were unusually wealthy. Immigrants living in Brooklyn when I was 6. Our family of 5 was supported by my dad being an unlicensed cab driver. We were all our new clothes are purchased in warehouses from bins with exploding ink stains poor. All our vegetables come from cans poor. We couldn't even afford name brand ramen noodles. What do insanely poor people buy that ordinary people know nothing about? Growing up my family had its moments of struggle. Our public transport system at the time had tickets which were simply hole punched with the date and month, not the year. So we'd save them and store them neatly in envelopes marked by month and concession or full fare. After a few years of saving tickets we pretty much had free train and bus travel for the next 10 years. Until they changed the ticketing system to electronically stamped tickets with barcodes. Mine were done by color and letter. I would see people with plastic baggies full of bus tickets, trying to find one that matched the current day's color and letter. My office only has a unisex bathroom so it has the facilities for men and women. Naturally there's a tampon machine, and tampons are only 5 cents. Once a month I'll work late, get a roll of nickels and fill up a grocery sack with tampons for my wife. Good man. Extended stay housing or motels hotels. When you can't qualify to get an apartment because you don't have proof of income, you end up wasting more money to stay for a week at extended day housing or a cheap motel. It sucks but having no home being a transient. I promise myself never to be in the same situation again. I have had students who've lived in extended stays. Apparently common practice in some places is to stay long enough to establish tenant rights, then stop paying until they are formally evicted. After that, rinse and repeat. I was so poor once that I would go to Long John Silver's and order a water and crunchies, which used to be free, then sit there and watch the people that would dine in. It was amazing how little they ate, and then they would leave without dumping their tray off in the trash. Fries, hush puppies, chicken, fish, all untouched. No I didn't eat a piece that was bitten off of. I once saw a woman order a two piece fish and more for her kid. That ate one hush puppy and a few fries. And then left the rest of it there. It was the best I had eaten in weeks. Glad that's behind me now. 
I'm surprised they let you stay without buying anything. Lots of school systems do free lunches for kids under 18 during the summer. When I was a kid I remember my dad taking us to get lunch at the school then go play disc golf, soccer, or do something else free and fun. It was a blast and I had no clue it was because we were poor. Dollar theaters. And sometimes they have a free afternoon evening show for kids with the purchase of a parent ticket. Many movies were seen by the three of us for four dollars with a shared popcorn and coke. My dad was amazing at making us feel rich on basically nothing. Good on him. You really realize how much your parents do for you once you get older and look back. Hope you're better off now, bud. When I was child, Burger King ran a special kids meal where it was too many burgers that were attached to each other like a weird conjoined burger experiment. Sometimes we would go. My dinner was 1.5 of the mini burgers. My mom's dinner was the half I didn't eat and she would fill up on the free refills of soda. The generic version of spam is called treat. You learn that sort of thing as a kid. I have been both very poor and very comfortable. A lot of very true statements already posted here. But here's what I have noticed. When you are broke, you can't plan ahead or shop sales or buy in bulk. Poor people wait to buy something until they absolutely need it. So they have to pay whatever the going price is at that moment. If 10 packs of paper towels are on sale for half price, that's great. But you can only afford one roll anyway. In this way, poor people actually pay more than others for common staple goods. This is true. It's expensive to be poor in the US. Stuff on layaway. My mom would always go to this store that sold heavily discounted irregulars and put it on layaway for our new school clothes. After selling plasma I would walk to Wendy's and eat the crackers and ketchup for dinner. I had to move out on my own when I was 17. I had no money at all and drove an old clunker Camry. I got a flat tire to match the flat spare in the trunk. I went to the discount tire on the east side of Indianapolis, where I was living, to see if they could patch it. When they got it on the rack, they said that belts were showing around the tire. In fact, all of the tires, and I would have to replace all four tires. I thanked them, went outside, sat in my car and started crying. The manager came out and knocked on the window. He said that he had a set of tires that would fit my wheels that someone left when they got new tires. I told him thanks, but didn't have any money. He told me not to worry about it and when I graduate, to come back and buy my tires from them. I had a really odd childhood. Until age 9 my family would have been classed as upper middle class. Then my father left and my mum went bat crap crazy. From 9 to 18 we were dirt poor. I remember being 10 years old and our weekly treat was to go to the Littlewoods cafe. I think they went bust. And they did a 99 page 5 piece breakfast. We shared that among my mum, brother, sister, and me. One of us got the extra item. We'd take turns. As an adult I have made sure my children will never know poverty because of excellent memories like that. Nothing motivates you more than memories of fighting over a solitary sausage. Learning the times of the day when meat, bakery, fish, vegetable and miscellaneous items are reduced to 75% at the local supermarket. I've been learning for years, but it's a good day when you find 400 grams of fresh mince for 99p, and you have warm filling food that you used to take for granted when living with parents. One thing I've noticed about being poor is that you become almost vegetarian because meat just costs too dang much. Frozen or fresh. Another thing would be buying the cheapest large container of yogurt, and mixing in jam for fruity yogurt. But that's not about being poor. That's just a good idea. I make a good living and I do the yogurt thing. Still saves a ton and I honestly like it better because I can make it less sweet than the pre-mixed stuff. Even still buying fade yogurt I save about $5 a week doing my yogurt that way. Doesn't seem like much but that's over $250 a year and every little thing helps when you have crushing student loan debt you're trying to murder. A buddy of mine went through a tough time a few years back, and I didn't know about it until he told me about a year ago. One thing that stuck with me was that he made just enough money to survive. By survive, he meant literally enough money to pay rent. Utilities and the cheapest, worst food he could buy. He couldn't afford transportation, not even the bus. He told me about a span of a few months he went through where he literally only ate water, dry noodles and peanut butter. For a few months, he worked at a restaurant and they cut his hours. 
he couldn't find other work. His first big reality check was that he had to sell his car to make rent one month. The next month he started selling other unnecessary items, like his old TV, some old appliances and his nicer clothes. He got to the point where he was doing his laundry with dish soap in his sink. He couldn't afford deodorant, razors or any of the things we take for granted, so he'd steal them from the grocery store. He didn't like to do it, but he had no choice. He never got caught. When he told me all of this, I was floored. I wish he would have told me when it was happening. I would have helped any way I could. At that time, I was by no means living a fancy lifestyle, but I could have thrown him a $20 spot here and there to help him put some groceries in the house or some TP in the bathroom. Frick, just thinking about it makes me ill. He's still poor today, but he works full time and is happy, at least from what I see. At home surgery, used a pair of needle nose pliers, a razor blade and some antiseptic super glue to remove a cyst on my forehead. The secret is to cut it in a cat's eye shape, quickly push the skin back after you pull the cyst out, don't let it pop, and get the glue on fast. Burn like 10 b on a b boat, but it bleeds a lot and you have to get it on quick to stop the bleeding. My dad pulled his own tooth once, said it hurt less than the tooth itself. That was one poor Mathurfriker, I wonder where he's at. The first 4 years of my life were spent in abject poverty. As a child, I would ask my mom if we could get a candy bar. She would explain to me, at age 3, that we could get the candy bar, but if we did, it meant we couldn't afford a 2 liter of coca cola. She would phrase it like so, if you get the candy bar, it'll be gone in a few days, but if you get the coca cola, we can have coca cola for the whole week. Amazingly, I knew enough to understand that coca coca for over a week was a better deal than 2 days of a candy bar. As a side effect, I was regularly told no when I asked for things I wanted, mostly lego sets or he-man toys. Around age 6, my father's stake in a mineral prospecting company finally paid off. Turns out he had been putting every dime he had into it since before I was born. We went from surviving on mayonnaise sandwiches to having 2015's equivalent of $10,300 per month in income. My little sister was around 2 or so at this time, and she was getting everything she wanted. For the first 6 years of my life, I had learned that asking for things I wanted would always end with a no, so I never asked for anything. My parents weren't able to put it together until my grandmother got very sick and came to live with us. The whole family was out shopping, and my grandmother knew I loved Legos, but I didn't ask for a set of them. Meanwhile, my little sister had a Barbie doll and a My Little Pony in each hand. She stopped and asked me, Rathodin, you don't want a Lego set mommy and daddy always tell me no, grandma, we can't afford them, I have only a very vague memory of this, but before she died, my grandmother told me this story and said that my mom broke down in tears in the middle of the store, sobbing, my dad had a look of defeated failure on his face, according to her, apparently, it simply never occurred to them the reason I never asked for anything was because I had always been told no. For Christmas, I got 3 Lego Technic sets. Powdered milk. I once worked in a call center and an old lady called almost in tears that cable went up by $1.50. Her line that she repeated more than once was that she couldn't afford fresh milk and had to buy powdered milk, unless it's due to a lack of refrigeration available or some sort of allergy. Only the very poor would buy powdered over fresh milk. We drank powdered milk growing up. It was terrible. Sometimes my mom would mix a bit of cream and to make it taste better. It didn't work. Ugh. Thanks for bringing up this painful memory. I knew a guy that would go to a livestock feed store and buy antibiotics and some other meds there that were meant for farm animals when he got sick. There was another med he'd get at pet stores too. He'd just cut the pills into smaller pieces to try to guess what the proper mg amount was. It's apparently crazy cheap for certain meds and doesn't require a prescription or guffed oversight like it would at a normal pharmacy. My parents would just get cheap antibiotics over the border in Mexico. That and roach poison and some other stuff like that. That we probably don't carry in the US. For a good reason. Growing up was interesting regarding money. My mom was a hoarder and I lived in a house with trash including animal waste everywhere with no heat or running hot water. I used to take jugs of water and put them on my front porch to warm up enough to bath with. 
The house was failing apart and the tub was actually sinking into the ground so we wouldn't use it so I made a hole in the corner of my basement floor so it would drain. The worst was winter the water never got warm because of the cold and my hair would be frozen since there was no heat. It took me a long time to figure out this wasn't normal. What made everything worst was she was abusive and made us poor with her spending. She made about 1000 a week or more and would give it to charity so others saw her in a positive light. They didn't know about the house. Once she even won the lottery and got 82,000 and gave it all away. All I asked was for a trailer so we had some place to get warm or shower but she saw nothing wrong with our life. There would also be days she gave our food money away and I wouldn't be able to eat if there was no school. My mother is a bee and we have no contact anymore. On the awesome side I have 4 kids and a 3 level house with 4 bathrooms. Guess who showers all the time with hot water now? About a year ago, I was addicted to alcohol, 4000 kilometers from home, dropped out of school and living in my 20 year old car. I got so used to eating microwaved potatoes that I considered walking into a 7 stroke 11 and pocketing a handful of mayo packets while pretending to buy a hot dog, a special treat. I grew up distinctly middle class and generally did not want for much. My recent experience has really put into perspective the difficulties experienced by people who are or have been in similar situations to myself, but bear the burden of direct responsibility to kids and family. Things have gotten a lot better since I've accepted the help of other people. Seriously, even relatively tiny gestures of kindness will go a long way with someone who is literally struggling for survival. Never underestimate the impact you can have upon another person's life. I'd probably be dead by now if it weren't for the unconditional love and support of friends, family, and random strangers. Instead, I'm 25, relatively healthy again, and back in school trying to finish off my engineering degree. <laughs> Rent to own furniture. $500 flat screen becomes $2000 when you pay by the week. Oh god. Bags of frozen veggies and a couple packs of ramen can make a family meal. I used to buy these awful frozen chicken discs wrapped in bacon. They were terrible, filled with gristle and just nasty. Eating those with rice and frozen corn was a real treat. I ate Kraft dinner, mac and cheese, every day for about 2-3 years because that was all I could cook while my mom worked. I could have made spaghettios, but I hated those, that for dinner, and one of those cheap 99 cent pack donuts from the grocery store for breakfast. Lunch was bologna sandwich and an apple. Finally, when I was about 10 or 11, I started teaching myself how to cook from my mom's old cookbooks so my meals got a lot better. All carbs, and cheap fats, scalloped potatoes, rice and cheap meats. My local bus service used to have paper transfers. So you'd pay your fare, get the paper transfer that was good for an hour, and then you'd use it for the next bus. But if you were only going to the station, you'd get a paper transfer anyway, then hang around the station for an extra 5 minutes to see if anyone needed it. Conversely, you'd wait around for people getting off the bus, to see if you could score someone's transfer. This only worked if you weren't switching buses, but I got quite a few free rides this way, and gave many a transfer away. Going without meds, living in constant pain because you can't afford a prescription. I remember laying in my bed at night, and my mom would be sobbing in her bed from pain, because she couldn't afford the meds that would treat her rheumatoid arthritis or anything but generic Tylenol for her pain. I guess that's not really buying anything, but while we're down memory lane, saving your birthday money from your grandma and aunts and uncles so you can pay for a babysitting course that lets you babysit at 12, getting a babysitting job at 12, and babysitting every day from 3 until 7 or 8, to earn some money, giving that money to your dad so he can pay his phone bill and put gas in his car. Getting a real job at 14. Working at a fast food joint so you got to eat dirt cheap. Still giving your dad money, but this time knowing it is going to the casino with a bar, but still doing it anyway. Being poor was awful 0 stroke 10 do not recommend. In university I used to buy a 10-20 LBS bags of potatoes, freeze dried chives, and gravy mix in bulk. Not the supermarket packs which are $1 for 2 cups of gravy. Restaurant sized packs that make 8 liters. That was often dinner. Usually at the end of the month when money got tight. Sometimes I had even saved enough that I could have mashed potatoes made with some sort of dairy. Or bacon grease. I also had a cheap tub of protein power for weightlifters. 
It was gross, but I would blend it up, usually with water hold my nose and gulp it down. It was actual protein, and slightly more healthy than a week long diet of potatoes. From what I've read, potatoes are the one solid food that a person can get all their nutritional requirements from. They may not be happy with that 89th consecutive meal of potatoes at the end of the month, but they won't be malnourished. Rotten bananas, stale bread, grey meat, and anything else the grocery is about to toss in the garbage. Giant bags of rice, beans, grain, or flour, canned vegetables, dried milk. I feel like few rich people even know about the grocery store bakery clearance section. Handfuls of ketchup packets from McDonald's. Growing up my mom used to tell me of the homeless guy she knew of that would go into the local McDonald's and get a free cup of hot water. Then proceeded to add ketchup, salt and pepper to make himself a hobo tomato soup. You can get new car parts from the junkyard for virtually nothing, with added discounts if you remove them from the junkers yourself. I had a 12 year old car in college and when it blew a tire, I went to the junkyard and found a decent set of tires. Bought all 4 for $70, which reduced my food budget to $16 for the next 2 weeks. Some lady in the grocery store saw me with a calculator trying to figure out how much ramen I could buy with $16 and handed me a $20. It made me cry. I'm glad I'm not poor anymore, but I'll always remember that lady. It's amazing how much $20 is worth when you don't have $20. Micro loans. Those who need them the most get screwed the worst by the high interest rates. It's a vicious cycle that people need to be warned about. My father and sister and I would spend all Sunday picking up cans to be recycled at the lake. So while all the other families were enjoying their cookout, we would scavenge through garbage cans. We did this because our father would take us to McDonald's afterwards. So after a whole day we would trade the aluminum in for a few bucks. My father would order a Big Mac, back when it was a dollar, and a small coffee. My sister and I would share the burger. She getting the part with two pieces of bun because she was older and I ate the solo. My father sat there and had multiple refills on his coffee. We spend many Sundays like that. Redditors who were poor as kids, what things were normal to you when you were poor growing up? Fast food being a massive treat, intense anxiety whenever school would force us to buy things, like class t-shirts or field trip admission costs, even if it was $6. I remember my dad saying something like public education is free, we don't have to give them any money, so there was no point even trying to get money from them, so embarrassing. I never missed anything though, must have had good teachers, or other parents looking out for the poor kids. Blankets on the windows to keep the heat in. Or using the oven to heat up the house. I grew up in Serbia in the 90s very poor when hyperinflation hit, eating a bread and sugar sandwich. Only being able to afford milk for my little brother, one glass per day. My dad giving me enough money so I could go to the store to buy a single banana. Bread loaf literally costing 2 cents. Wearing the same clothes for a week straight. Taking a shower once a week and having to boil your water in a large pot. Sharing a school bag with my sister. Our house had nylon and duct tape where some windows were supposed to be. This especially sucked during storms. Planting and harvesting our own vegetables. Sealing some house cracks with mud. Walking everywhere and asking for rides because we didn't own a car. Firewood. And only one room of the house having heat. Coca Cola was a luxury. If I saw someone drinking coke. I thought they were rich. Being poor sucked. And so did the Yugoslavian civil wars. In relation to the hyperinflation. My dad always says you'd get your paycheck and by the time you arrived home it was worth half. Not wearing shoes in the summer. You got shoes for school. They lasted until the end of the school year. Then you went barefoot. It's not as bad as it sounds because we lived in the country. Also your feet get callews pretty fast. Freaking grandma's cottage had a gravel driveway. But not like small gravel or pea sized aggregate. It was big pebbles. And crossing that was always crappy. Just the odd one would be poking up right to cut into the ball or heel if you stepped on it. So you had to be careful. Then the sun would bake it, and now you have to move fast because it burns. I got my first summer job when I was 12 or so, and anytime I managed to build up a nice chunk of change my mom would borrow the money. She always paid it back, I think, but it wasn't an option. She just took it when needed. 
My allowance or good grade money or shoveling snow money that got borrowed and replaced with IOUs specifically from my stepmom never got returned. You're a lucky fella. Powdered milk. No AC. My parents sometimes skipped meals so us kids could eat. Clothes were hand-me-downs or from Walmart. And only for school starting. No wastefulness. Rarely eat out. No name brands. Antenna TV. No cable. No healthcare health insurance. No dentist visits. I started working and buying my own clothes at age 14. Our home was falling apart around us. My dad tried to keep it together. Sort of. Oh. And my parents never being home because they each worked multiple jobs. I could go on. Buying the absolute cheapest item there was of something. Wearing shoes with holes in them constantly. Dressing super weird because everything was handed down to you. Blocking off whole sections of the house in winter to save money by heating only one or two rooms. Heating water on the stove so you could bathe with hot water. Buying markdown meat that was graying or slightly green in spots. Burn scars on the back of my legs for trying to stand too close to the kerosene heater in the winter. Paper food stamps. My mom sending me to the neighbors houses to ask to borrow things like dish soap. I hated the going to neighbors to borrow things. I didn't really get that they were in the same boat and you help out where you can when you can. Hiding any nice present you got from wealthier family members because people would be about you having it if they ever saw you using food stamps. Everything was homemade. Oatmeal is cheaper than cereal. Lots of beans and rice. No AC. Government cheese. Powdered eggs and milk. Wick cereal. Canned meat in big cans with no paper label. Just the USDA beef or whatever on the front. I kind of developed a taste for it. Farina. To this day I cannot eat anything that reminds me of the texture of government farina. Powdered everything. Anything that could be powdered and stored in a box. Was. My friends didn't believe that powdered eggs existed. That you didn't get clothing or shoes that you didn't absolutely need. It's foreign to me to this day to buy a piece of clothing I don't require, but just want. Me too. And I hold on to clothing while way past the point where they are are not wearable. My shoes get holes before I buy new ones and it is not necessary anymore. I'm not rich but dang. I can have decent shoes. Just can't get rid of the mindset. The flip side of that is I fix things instead of buying new. Actual food stamps that look like postage stamps. I thought that was how everyone bought food. Also, stocking up on V05 shampoo like we were preppers. It apparently goes on sale once a year. The first time I remember consciously realizing that we were poor was when I was 6 and went to the doctor because an eye infection had turned into sepsis. When asked who our family doctor was and I had to reply the emergency room. The reason the question was asked was because the PA a year a week earlier had misdiagnosed it as Pinky and sent us home saying everything would get better in a week or so. Actually I had an infected cut on my cornea and it was spreading into my eye socket and bloodstream. The doctor was incredulous that nobody had even actually looked at the eye yet as within half a second of using that eye light scope thingy doctors used to look in eyes and ears showed him what was wrong. I mean, I knew we didn't have much money a good while before that. But that was the first time I realized just how crippling poverty really is. That because my parents didn't have enough green paper slips in a bank that I might lose my eye. And that the lack of those little green slips was going to have a long term negative impact on my future. Poor is relative. But never buying a brand name of anything if there was an off brand option that was 5 cents cheaper. Even if it was far inferior. Oh. I buy brand. On eBay. We are getting ready for a trip to Colorado for Christmas, and I'm buying second-hand snow pants for our Floridian children. They can have the good crap, but only used. Using the neighbor's hose when they weren't home to fill buckets to flush the toilet. Our power usually stayed on. My mom worried the neighbors would call CPS if the lights were off, so they let out the utilities go first. Like others here no AC heat or much food. Every winter I hoped for snow so my dad could make snow cream. Fresh snow, sugar and milk. Such a treat as a kid. Having your windows ice over on the inside of your room because there was no heat. I used to spend so much time scratching off that frost on my bedroom window in the early morning right after I woke up. Weird little poverty game for a kid to play. 
a single kerosene heater that would stink smoke the whole house out on the few nights a year we could afford to run it. Sleeping on the bathroom floor in summer because it was too dangerous to sleep on the balcony. Bologna and tomato sauce sandwiches three times a day. One pair of hand-me-down shoes that I was never allowed to wear unless it was a special occasion. The only item in our house that used electricity was the clock radio in my parents' bedroom, and it only got turned on when they went to bed. Christmas consisted of receiving the clothes and school supplies for the next year. All your friends at school aren't hungry and share their lunch with you and you never work out why. You discover chocolate milk and it literally blows your mind. McDonald's comes to town and three years later a friend's dad is driving a bunch of kids home from the game and asks you what you want. And you say nothing. Thanks because you know better than to ask for anything. And because you have literally no idea what they actually sell there. Entire weekend spent wandering around town looking for coins so that you can get 50 c worth of mixed lollies. Regular visits from the government lady who asks you a bunch of weird questions. Mum crying all the time. You get $10 from somewhere and it never even occurs to you to spend it. You give it to your parents. You never ever want for anything. Because there is no point. Laundromats were so good for change. I could get a couple dollars checking inside dryers and under machines. Not needing much, and then thrift store shopping when we did need. A couple times a year we would go visit family in bigger cities and be so excited to hit up the nicer thrift stores because that's where the rich people donated their clothes. I still shop at thrift stores for a lot of things. The police would come into our neighborhood, fill up the block with their cars, open their trunks full of toys and give them out to all the kids. Realized after we moved that I stopped seeing this phenomenon and I asked my mom why they didn't do it in our new neighborhood. Just straight up. Oh yeah, it was a sort of charity thing because we were poor and our neighbors were poor. Everyone there was just poor. That is actually really wholesome. 1. Bread out of toaster and syrup equals French toast. 2. Stale potato chips and ketchup equals French fries. I didn't realize until I was older that toast with cinnamon and butter wasn't actually french toast. When my parents made rice for dinner, I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back on it, I now realize when I ate a bowl of rice with butter, things were tight for my parents. I didn't think twice about it. We are all doing okay now. We used to have butter noodles, just spaghetti and some butter, or country crock. We are all doing okay now, too. Glad you are as well. Still being very hungry after lunch time in school. I remember having some pretzels and a small sandwich while the other kids had lunchables and cookies and all that junk. I also was recently reminiscing with a childhood friend of mine and I mentioned how I miss my old house and she said I don't. Your house was kinda dumpy I took that like a dagger. I know what you mean. I had pretty much the same childhood. I always thought the other kids were crazy for complaining about how grody the school lunch was. It was the best food I would get. Since at home, it was always spaghetti with watered down sauce and foo much garlic salt added. Or, pickle and pimento loaf. <laughs> My mom smiling and telling us everything's fine and then sneaking off to the bathroom or her bedroom to cry because we'd ask her insensitive questions relating to our financial situation. Being the only kid who didn't have a snack during snack time in elementary school, the teachers kept a little snack jar for me and a few other kids, but I never took any because I felt bad. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was bought a high-end name brand pair of jeans for Christmas by rich relatives. Everyone at school was jealous. I didn't even know the brand, because we never had brand name anything. Jeans were just whatever fit that I could find at the thrift store. I was an only child till I was 11, so I didn't have anyone to get hand-me-downs from. <laughs> Sharing a room and bathroom with my dad and sister, we spent a little over a year in this arrangement. Had just a little 14-inch TV, bunk beds on the side of the room and a queen bed in the middle with one big dresser and a couple tubs we used for clothes. I really thought it was fun all the time I got to spend around my dad. Wasn't necessarily poor my entire childhood, but looking back I know this was taxing for a father to take on by himself. Now he's living it up. 15 stroke 10 good dad. It was about 2008 when me and my brothers moved in with my mom. She managed to get a tiny tiny apartment for all four of us. Tiny kitchen. Small bathrooms. We were grateful that we had our own place. The apartment didn't have cable, 
or at least we didn't, so when my brothers and I had to get up for school, my mom would plug in an old radio and turn it to the Donnie Simpson show at 7am in the morning. It gave us our daily news and weather updates, music and everything we needed to know, just like a regular news station on TV would. Cut to 2010, and my mom finally got a better job, so she was able to pay for cable. We had gotten so used to the radio that even though we had the ability to watch the news, we still wanted to hear the radio. Being hungry all the time, looking forward to free school lunches, government cheese and honey, thinking that McDonald's was a treat. Most of my memories of that time revolve around food or the lack of it. When we were poor, my mom made a lot of ham hock and beans. When we were really poor, she saved the ham hock for the next batch. The house we lived in at that time was poorly insulated and was in a brutally cold climate. The wood stove could only keep up with the living room. During the winter, if it was below freezing, the whole family slept in the living room. This was in Kansas in the late 70s and early 80s. My stepdad bought dog food in bulk because it was cheaper without the bag. Stepdad went on the run from the police, growing weed in the corn I Ike. My mom gave up and moved us all to California where her parents lived. Early the 1st of December woman, 4 kids, and a dog in a 74 Corolla wagon with everything we owned on the roof or in a one-wheeled Sears Allstate trailer from approximately 1942. It had a caster type wheel with two hitches, lol. It pulled the bumper off in the middle of the night in haze. KS. My mom begged a welding shop to fix it for $10. They did it for free. I was 11 and had to troubleshoot and de-ice the carburetor climbing through the Rockies. After many adventures involving a puppy on the road for a week, we arrived at my grandparents. Grandpa said it looked like the grapes of wrath. You should write a book. I would seriously buy it. Powdered milk and expired beans. Yes I was an adult before I realized that real milk tastes good. My mom always mixed powdered milk in a regular milk jug and we just didn't know any better. My dad was a great gardener though. Paying rent at 15. We were homeless for 6 months. Luckily we had a camper to stay in at a campground but we made do. There was a basketball court, a pond, and a lot of rich kids. Kinda made me feel like crap when these kids had like, a second home that they go to a month out of the year. And I'm in a camper with my cokehead mom alcoholic stepdad, and brother that's now on the run with three warrants. I guess I'm the only one that's somewhat normal. We never really had food either. Afterwards we moved into low income housing and would lose power all the time cause they'd rather get fricked up than pay bills. I came home from school to see my TV, my PS2, games, gone. They pawned them to pay rent. I was working at the time and I had to pay to get it back. I freaking hated it. I had a girlfriend and would always go to her house. Basically came home to sleep and that's it. I'd try to stay out of the house as much as possible. And was super embarrassed when I'd have to tell her that I had no power. Or food in the fridge. Or a phone. But now. I work my butt off. My wife as well. And we get crap done. We're not rich but we're comfortable and we have the things we want. And are thankful for every bit if it because she came up the same way. Lay away at Walmart for big spending times of year, like for back to school clothes. No way could my parents afford to cloth three growing children in one shopping trip. Oyster crackers were a delicacy. You'd only rarely get them in the mission food boxes around where I lived, and when you did, everyone was fighting over them. Finally something other than powdered milk, generic wheat cereal, oatmeal, and dry beans. Going to hilariously underfunded and crappy schools, worst elementary school in the province represent, and all the issues that came with that. For example, I went to schools in the mid 2000s that didn't have computers for students and teachers often wouldn't stick around for the entire year. It wasn't until I started using Reddit when I found out that people who don't go to crappy schools had teachers who push them into post secondary. Whereas my teachers seemed to have given up on us and would actively discourage us from going into post secondary. Knowing what we would have for lunches and dinners 100% of the time because it was always the same. Being extra careful with consumables because if you were wasteful your parents would get really angry, or worse, just start crying. Going to visit grandparents and all their church friends would overload us with toys and clothes, all of which were old, outdated, and smelled funny, but we took home anyways. 
hand-me-downs from literally everyone. Then mom sewing and hemming to make them sort of fit. I don't really remember shopping for clothes until I graduated high school. Same. I have a shopping habit of clothes because of this. Always getting hand-me-downs. I randomly splurged to feel like I have something new. Walk-in closet full of clothes with tags still on them. I occasionally go through my clothes and find something new I forgot I bought. Feels great. Be Comfort food is still ramen noodles with an egg in it. No account. Odd things I figured out when I was older. I didn't realize you could buy milk at the grocery store. Milk came from the farmer once a week and you had to go get it. For some reason I thought white bread was something you only got in restaurants. I was an adult before I figured out my mom could buy more wheat bread on food stamps. Veggies came from grandpa's garden. Because I am old. Government cheese. Really bad home haircuts. I didn't have my hair cut at an actual place until I became an adult. Turning down a side road when a police car was nearby because our tags were out. Watching other kids getting to go on all the field trips and not getting to go watch the talent shows and plays at school that cost a dollar to get into. I sat in that empty classroom a lot. Having to announce every morning in road call that I'd take the free lunch tray that day. Thanks. Never having snacks at snack time. Wearing donated clothes and having another kid announce that the shirt I was wearing used to be hers. A kid dropped a dime on the floor of the cafeteria and made me pick it up because I needed it and she didn't. Just constantly bullying about my clothes and house. What are the best life hacks for poor people? Please tell your doctor if your medications are too expensive. My parents worked themselves to the bone and we ate like crap to help pay for medicine for me and my sister. Hemophilia. We needed medicine to help clot during our periods. They never complained and just worked. My mom didn't want anyone to know we were poor. There were cheaper alternatives. They could have saved thousands of dollars. I'm a family doctor now and I make it a point to talk about medication costs and ask at all of my follow-ups if things are affordable. We don't know what your copay is and it's not always easy to tell what will be covered on your plan. Please let us know if something is too much. This is what we are here for. I work in the US. If your medication is too expensive, and you have something other than Medicare or Medicaid try looking for manufacturer's coupons. Simbacort has a great one for one year no copays right now, and some of the newer long acting stimulants do too. Ask about local compounding pharmacies. Mail order, 3 month supply or off label dosing. Pharmacists look away. Like you can use eye drops in your ears for an acute bacterial infections and sometimes they are significantly cheaper. I've done that once or twice when patients just didn't have the extra cash to get the one designated for your ears. If you need a procedure done and have a residency program or medical school local to you, see if they need any volunteers for didactics or demonstrations. We've done ingrown toenails, warts, Skin lumps and bumps for free during lectures to teach the other residents how to do them. Two great sites. NeedyMedsOrg. GoodRx.com. We're not even really poor but my husband has a med that is kind of expensive in its extended release form but works way better. Talked to the doctor about it and she gave him a coupon that brought the cost down to only $5 more than the non-XL formula. It's seriously worth having this conversation. To all my fellow college kids who use Chegg as a lifeline but can't afford it. Use textcheek.com. Copy the URL of the blocked Chegg page and paste. Answer that you're under 13 on the survey so they can't ask you anything else. And bam. An unlocked text of the problem solution. Eliminate food waste. Things you'd normally throw away like vegetable peelings and bones can be turned into flavorful stock for future meals. Something I do is save bread ends and or pieces of bread that got squished, stale, or whatever, in a bag in the freezer. Once I collect a decent amount, I thaw them out and make some homemade stuffing. It's super tasty, and feels fancy for just being bread, veggies, sage, and stock. Go to the library. Not only are there books there, but also you can check out video games, sewing machines, movies, museum passes, and so much more. Not to mention the software, education and events that can help you get a raise, promotion, or better job. Libraries freaking rule. I'm pretty comfortable financially but still use the library all the dang time. Mine even checks out wall art. Rich people throw out amazing stuff. If you know someone with a truck, 
You can go around the wealthy areas on garbage day and get all sorts of furniture, appliances, and clothing. A little cleaning and maybe a few minor repairs and you have lots of stuff to use or sell. If you wind up homeless, get a Planet Fitness Gym membership, $10 a month, so you can shower every day. The one near my work also has free Wi-Fi, free showers, free locked storage, locations in practically every city in the US. Can shower, crap, shave, wash, even occasionally get free pizza. Added benefit of getting to work out. You could live in a car and spend $10 a month and slap together a semi-functioning form of homelessness. Don't have kids. I agree. Having kids is a choice, and they drain all your resources. Not being mean, but that's reality, folks. If you have access, ethnic grocery stores usually have cheaper produce. Can confirm. Local ethnic neighborhood grocery stores have prices much lower than the bigger supermarkets. I more or less only shop local anymore. Hot sauce is a simple investment to turn sad, bland food into sad, slightly less bland food. Swing by a Taco Bell and you can get some for free. If you live close to one, Planet Fitness membership, $10 per month and the location near me does free pizza once per week, and free bagels once per week. That's 8 meals for $10. Plus you can save on your water if you want by using their showers. Also when you're broke, it's hard to kill time and not spend money. So go to the gym and use their Wi-Fi to watch shows while you walk on a treadmill. It's honestly a great way to kill time. Congee with a broth cube and leftover veggies and meat. When things are really tight, just rice, broth cube and water. 1 cup of rice with 6-8 cups of broth or water will stretch into several meals this way. It can be made really nutritious by adding more things, but when mun is tight this can satisfy your belly. Also, make use of all social services available to you. All of them. You're poor. These services exist to help you get by and make things easier. Apply for them even if you're 100% sure you don't qualify. You never know how else they might be able to help you. If you have pets. Find charities on Facebook that help provide food for pets to people with a low income. I can't tell you how much stress this took off my shoulders knowing I had enough kibble for my cats so they wouldn't starve and I could buy my own food instead. Don't be ashamed of being poor. I know people look down on you for that, but shame gets in the way of coping with poverty. Everybody can get poor at no fault of their own if circumstances align right. Even if you made less than smart choices, got a drug habit or whatever, you're not less deserving of basic human respect and kindness. Nobody is perfect, and poverty exists because governments don't implement or fund social services well. Frick with minimum wage etc. Everybody deserves to live comfortably and not have to turn over every penny three times before spending it, no matter how much character that builds. Poverty freaking sucks, and still come up short on basic necessities. You can donate plasma and be paid $30, up to 6 times a month, extra $180, it is supposed to hurt a little. I donate twice a week, for $70 a week, my donation center has monthly promotions, if I donate every week and I manage to get the promotion I can earn $300-$350 a month, by just sitting on my butt for a few hours a week. At Walmart or most grocery stores you can buy a rotisserie chicken for wicked cheap. They're actually cheaper to purchase cooked instead of raw. And you can make several meals out of just the meat you scrape off the bones. I often make sandwiches or apps and it'll typically last for like 6 meals. All for like 5 bucks. Then you get to use the carcass to make a stock. Especially if you go after 5 o'clock or so. They mark them down to move the product. Manage every dollar you spend. Know exactly where your money is going. You can't reduce spending and save more if you don't understand where your money is going. There are a number of apps out there that help you budget and tell you what you're spending money on. Mint, Truebill, ETC. Once you see the breakdown, you might notice that you're spending more on meals than you should. Or you had that subscription you forgot about that suddenly took $25 out of your account. Remember, being poor and being constantly broke aren't always the same thing. Sometimes you're just bad with money. Not sure it's a hack, but never, ever, let anyone or anything convince you that you're any less of a human being because of your crappy financial situation. 
go to Aldi. Most stuff there, eggs, lettuce, salt, are just as good as other stores and much cheaper. We just picked up 4 dozen eggs for 79 cents each from Aldi. Quite a value when you're baking for a bunch of holiday stuff. Pop an egg into your ramen. Simple, cheap, and improves the taste a lot. Scramble or fry an egg and put on rice. Boiled but preferably fried rice. Whisk an egg and add to canned corned beef when cooking it in a pan. Soft boil an egg and have with toast soldiers. Cut toast into thin strips. Dip them in and eat. Learn to poach eggs and pop them on top of food like rice, beans and let that you go through. Dot. Goddammit I'm hungry now. Shop at Goodwill second hand stores. If you are hungry and have no food, go to sleep. Sleep is my favorite hobby. So, in my area, bonus chicken breasts cost at least $10 for two. A whole chicken costs about $10 or less if it's on sale. I learned from YouTube how to dress, cut up, a chicken. So now I get two boneless breasts, two boneless thighs, two drummies and two wings for the price of two breasts. Also you use the carcass and the bits of meat attached to it to make soup. Buy the store version aka imitation brand, version of things. Cheaper and it works the exact same save for a few exceptions. Canadians. Selection brand baked beans are crap. You don't need the expensive ass Heinz ones but I strongly urge you not to buy selection brand baked beans. Supercook.com has a recipe generator that will help you make good meals with whatever you have at home. Best thing ever. Went from boring basic meals to actual tasty meals. I just tried this with what's in my kitchen RN and it suggested butter curls, ingredients, butter and then 10 different recipes for plain white rice. I guess it's time to go grocery shopping. Drink only water. It's one of those ripple effect things that improves every other area of your life. I work in a welfare office. The number of people who are both one, unable to afford proper nutrition, supposedly, and two, morbidly obese is counterintuitive until you see the enormous soda so many people travel with. It's incredibly easy to drink more calories than you think you're drinking, and the fattening nature of these drinks is all in the sugar content. Switch to carrying water instead of soda or other sweetened beverages and I assure you the following will happen. 1. You will save more money than you imagine. 2. You will sleep better. 3. Food will taste better. 4. You will have more consistent energy throughout the day. 5. Your skin overall appearance will improve. And 6. You will lose weight. If you do nothing other than stop spending money on soda sweet tea etc and just drink filtered tap water, you will thank yourself. Source, was poor, now I'm not poor. Still drink only water, and unsweetened coffee, I'm over 40 pounds lighter, sleep well, and feel better. When buying something that you expect to last, buy the cheapest version of it that makes sense. If it doesn't break and lasts forever, awesome. If it does break though, go out and buy the best quality one you can. If you broke the cheap one once chances are you'll break the cheap one over and over again so spending a bit more now will save future you from having to spend more money down the road. This is especially good advice with tools. Use coupons. I started doing this when I was making 8 bucks an hour, and still do it today. Take some time to add coupons to your account for grocery stores that do them online. Take some time to clip them from junk mail you get. In the average grocery trip, I still save between 30-40%. You don't have to be an extreme couponer or crazy person to save a lot of money. If you have to choose between keeping the lights on and paying for heat in the winter, keep the lights on. First thing in the morning when you get up, turn the oven on, if you've got one, for a few minutes and let that warm up your kitchen. Unless it's gas don't take the Sylvia Plath route out of misery. Get the cheapest old sewing machine you can find and hem and maintain your clothes. While lots of crappy clothes are super cheap, they fall apart after a few wears. When you can, buy decent clothes and take care of them. It will cost less in the long term. Get a library card. Libraries are sanity savers when you're too broke for other entertainment. As well, get a local schedule of events and go out when something is free or very cheap. Keep yourself occupied, even when you are struggling with money. Get to know your local bakeries and other businesses, in particular their baking and delivery schedules. 
Old product that didn't move that needs to be sold or disposed of before a new shipment comes gets big markdowns. You can get decently healthy food for relatively cheap. If you live in some states, you can make decent extra dough collecting cans and bottles. I went door to door collecting cans and bottles after leaving a super crappy job many years ago. And while it was sometimes fruitless, and some people are less than kind to a person on their doorstep, I made more money that week doing that than I had at the job I had just left. A lot of people were thrilled that I was there to take their cans and bottles off their hands. I did it until I found another real job, and got to know some of the other folks that did that for a living. Real nice people, very supportive of each other for the most part, as long as you stayed out of their territory. Do what you can to maintain your friendships and relationships. Poverty is, among many other things, boring, and often very isolating. Stay connected to your people, live with other people, go out when you can. Suggest cheap things to do. Eat the rich to absorb their wealth. Power move. Stop buying weed. I grew up in poverty, and nearly everyone smoked weed. The only people who didn't smoke weed, were able to focus on a way out. Everyone I knew, used weed as a bandage to cover a gaping hole in their ambition. You've been spotted by the doggo of studying. Like this video for good grades for the next 2 years. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.